What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica, and we are down here. Peace, y'all. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. What's up, everybody? It's me, Erica, and this is your... Real Housewives of Miami review. Now, I'm going to do one and two in both reviews. I mean, in both reviews. I'm going to do both episodes in one review, okay? I have a lot of notes, um, but I'm going to try and go through them quick and just elaborate on... I was going to say elaborate on the most important things. Um, girl, everything is a good storyline. Real Housewives of Miami is good already. And let me tell you how much I am here for the opulence of it all to me i feel like what we have witnessed in the first two episodes in terms of the expressions of wealth i love it i love to see huge homes i love that alexia drove her car into a car elevator and went up to the 52nd floor and got out to a 10,000 square foot home. I fucking love it. I love it. I love that Lisa lives on Star Island. I love it. I love um, Dr. Nicole's house and her partner. What's his name? Lenny. I think that's his name. I love their house. I love that it kind of looks like Adobe, like the the inside. It looks kind of like Spanish style is what is what it's giving. Um, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I'm here, you know, all the girls are, most of the girls are back. Um, Marisol, Adriana, um, Alexia and Lisa. And honestly, I didn't remember Lisa. And I think Lisa came in on season two, I believe. Um, I don't remember her, but then when they started showing clips, I was like, oh, okay. Cause of the first episode, I was like, who the fuck is Lisa? She knew, but then they started showing clips of her and I was like, and I remember that clip of her. And the hard hat with the sledgehammer breaking the wall. I remember that clip. And I was just like, I don't remember Lisa. But anyways, um, and then we have Gertie who, hello, I love Gertie. And then we have Nicole. Um, Gertie is an event planner. Um, she is married to her high school sweetheart who is a firefighter, handsome white dude. She's Haitian. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm here for Nicole's setup. So let's talk about it, y'all. So everybody meets for lunch. Um, Marisol, Adriana, Lisa, Alexia, and Larsa. I forgot to put Larsa in there. Larsa's back too. Um, they're meeting for lunch. Marisol, we know that she's she's married now. Um, everybody shows up. Larsa shows up. Her face looks different. Um, um, what's her name? Adriana says that, um, she looks like Kim K. Um, and then, then the producer was like, um, is that, is that, does that look good to you? She was like, whatever your taste is, honey. I know that's right. Um, Adriana is divorced from her husband and she's, I guess, living single. Lars is also single, but still married. Um, it's just paperwork that needs to be um, filled out or whatever. And she says that the marriage just wouldn't get better. She thought it would get better. It just wouldn't get better. And she served 21 years. So that was it. Her, her kids, um, she showed all her kids. She's going to have a hot girl summer party. They get into her OnlyFans account. Alexia is very judgmental about the Alexia, um, about the, um, OnlyFans account. Marisol seems like she's a little um, judgmental, but not really. And then Adriana seems like she's a little judgmental, but like busting her balls. Like I'm going to fuck with her and I'm going to act like I want to OnlyFans too. And show me the way, show me what to do, Larsa. Show me what to do. Cause I, what, did, what did Adriana say? I need to, um, I need to, you know, I'm single now. I need to work for myself. I need to make sure I'm secure. I was like, these bitches are a mess. She was giving that girl the blues the whole time. Here, let me turn it up. She was. She was giving her the blues the whole time. Um, and then even Mark Marisol was like, it's like a peep show, right? It's like a peep show. And she says it's basically the same shit that she's doing on IG. And just a little bit more. Ooh, she's giving just a little bit more. Um... I, you know, my thing with OnlyFans, do what you got to do. Well, do whatever the fuck you got to do. And she was saying, 
that the niggas be asking for feet pics and stuff like that. So you ain't hurting nobody. I was with her. I was like, she not. I'm not hurting nobody if I can make ten thousand dollars. How much in a day or a month or something? Why were they showing all the clips of the people on how much they made? And they show Ray J and they were like, he just joined today. He hasn't made anything yet. Who put that in there? That was funny. I was like, what? Okay. So Alexia and Herman, she said that her and Herman got a divorce. Herman died a year later. And there was this, there's this rumor that Herman is gay and that he had a boyfriend the entire time and that the boyfriend came to the funeral and and then Adriana says next week that the word on the street is that Herman died when he was fucking. So I don't know, child. It's a mess. Um, she talks about her son's um, accident and his brain injury. Frankie, his brain injury. He's kind of he's um, he just has a brain injury. So he he needs some help or whatever. Um, I really it really touched my heart when he was like sitting in the car. They showed a clip of him sitting in the car and then um he was like how are you and she was like i'm fine and this and that and then he asked her again how are you and then he goes i'm sorry i felt so bad for him because it's like you can't help it it's just your brain and you can't help it and i feel bad i felt bad i felt bad but i love that she you know they have this um i want to say like a beauty bar but like a salon nail salon and it's Alexia and Frankie's beauty bar. I think that's what it said. And she's like, I want to make sure his name is on it and stuff like that. So I thought that was cool. Um, she drove into her apartment, honey, on the 52nd floor. Now she's with this guy named Todd, who is a gringo, honey. And a, she said super, that's a super American name. I never even heard that name before. <laughs> Todd. <laughs> Todd is an Italian American man, honey. And he has daughters too. So they have, she has stepdaughters now. Well, when she gets married, she'll have stepdaughters now. And um, she talks about her son, Peter. Now, let me tell you something. Peter looks like a self-absorbed, entitled prick, but he is so handsome. I was looking at his face and I was trying to figure out, I was like, who, he looks like a young actor. And I couldn't think of it. I looked up um, Robin Williams. I was about to say Robin Harris. I looked up Robin Williams and I thought it was Robin Williams and I was looking at young pictures of Robin Williams, not quite. And I was like, is it Woody Harrelson? Because when he opened his mouth, he has like gaps right here. And Woody Harrelson ha has some gaps in his front teeth too. And I was like, is that a young Woody Harrelson? And then I was trying to think of Woody Harrelson from Cheers, but he has a really, uh, he could be a model, honey. His face is so like striking and just, he was just looking because he looks kind of like older, but then he has this like young look to his face. I, just, I was like, Peter is fine as hell to me, but you could tell he ain't got his shit together. She was like, oh, and Peter, he lives in downtown and he has, he's looking at business opportunities. He's unemployed. Just say that. <laughs> but he's a real estate agent. So he started working for Peter. Um, Peter started working for Todd and something happened and um, him, Peter and Todd have issues. We find out what it is later. Um, Peter is also newly divorced. Um, he was living in Paris for a while and is now back looking for business opportunities. <laughs> I was like, just say the nigga don't have a job right now. Okay. Lisa lives on Star Island. Lisa's home is sickening. It is sickening. Do you hear me? But I don't like the front. I don't like pillars and stuff in the front. I don't like it just makes it seem like the White House to me. I don't like that kind of, those kind of structures. I do love a Spanish style structure. I just love that. I love how it looks. Um, but she said they tore the house down and rebuild. And that's what they rebuilt, honey. But the backyard and that pool is everything. I was like, oh my God, this is everything. This is what the fuck I be talking about. Am I the only one? That's I said, this is what I want to see all of this shit. And I want to see all of this shit. But then I also want to see these girls have these regular ass problems, right? But they live like this. I, did you see Lisa's closet, girl? I was like, okay, I can't even, I can't take it. I can't take it. Anyways. So they, she said because um, her and, uh, what's his name? Lenny. That's Lenny. Lenny is um, Lisa's husband. Her and Lenny is a plastic surgeon. So, you know, they, they caked up, okay? And they live in Miami. So, you know, everybody, when they went to Larson's house, everybody, she was like, I think everybody, Lenny has done everybody's boobs here. Yes, he's a plastic surgeon. Their house is nice. They have their kids. And she said they almost got a divorce because 
um, she wasn't able to conceive and, and all this other stuff. So they almost got a divorce and he had an emotional affair with a $2 hoe. Obviously she wasn't that down trodden low. She was fulfilling his emotional needs apparently, but she says she doesn't know if he actually, if it was past an emotional affair, but she was like, I have all his passwords, but you can never know. You'll never know. And that's true. You just never know. You just never know. That was bothering me. The flap of that book was up. Okay. And so she says they're in a pretty good place. And he says, she said he came back groveling. She said she, she it was over when she found out he was having an emotional affair. Um, she says they're in a pretty good place now. And he says, we're a work in progress. So we're going to see you Um, Gertie, Haitian chick. I was here for her. I put yes with an exclamation point <laughs> i was like yes give me everything her energy everything 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 so she's helping alexia plan her wedding to um todd the gringo okay um and she's an elite um high upscale event planner she's been in martha stewart vogue she was like honey we can do this all day i said yes gertie yes <laughs> i was here for it. i'm here for gertie and i'm here for kiki okay uh, even though kiki i was like kiki, what are you talking about talking about that goat and talking about um taking the mouth and putting the mouth on the udder to take the milk out the goat gertie there's no i don't i mean not gertie kiki girl no i don't believe she was like i just didn't know yes you knew i don't i don't think there's anybody in the world who thinks that you need to put your mouth on the udder of an animal to take to extract the milk don't you're not gonna give me that she was trying to act like she was stupid that's why marisol was like girl you gotta be smarter than that don't say no dumb stuff like that I, there's no way that anybody could think that 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 is how you do it i, I just don't i don't believe her i don't believe her anyways so Gertie, um, she says she's a workaholic. Her family is everything to her. She has her fighter fire husband from um, high school sweetheart. She's a mother of two, and they are her everything. Her children are her two boys are her everything. Um, Liam and um, Liam and I forgot their names. Liam and child on hold on. Where's Gertie? Liam and Miles. Liam and Miles. Miles is such a cute name for a boy. I love that name. Um, so Larsa is so happy that she's independent. This is the best she's ever felt. She's single. Um, she wants to sell her house. She's so proud of herself. She's unapologetically living her life. She couldn't say unapologetic. She was like, what is it? What's the word? <laughs> like Larsa. But Larsa was cute back in the day. She looks totally different. I'm sorry. When her old face, beautiful. I thought Larsa was really pretty. Like just, you know, a pretty girl. Like now she looks like an old woman trying to look young. She does. She does. Um, she's having her party, her hot girl summer party. I love that she had they had the cute lifeguards. They had the the um shark instead of a bull because they're from um uh, Florida. Then we finally meet Dr. Nicole Martin, who is also a Cuban woman, Cuban American woman, whose father is in jail. And he, Alexia was like, "We have a lot in common." Her father went to jail. I think she said so much. Somebody in her family went to jail, and she was like, "And we're just perfect and pretty." I was like, "Okay." They asked Lisa about Larsa's ass, and she was like, "She has a great ass. She has a great." She was not. I don't know why they're trying to get her to say something negative about her. Lenny probably did her ass too. Or is Lenny only doing boobs? What's up? Anyway, so we meet Dr. Nicole Martin, who is financially independent. She lets us know off the bat. I'm I'm here for it. Um, her has her husband, her boyfriend, or partner, or she's like her partner. His name is Anthony. They've been together. Um, six years and she says what am I gonna call him my baby daddy honey ask um April Jones and then they love referring to the men they had children with as their baby daddy um she feels like marriage is anti an antiquated concept if it's it's not perfect but if it's not broken don't try to fix something that isn't broken I love her setup I love her setup you know like Alexia said she thinks that because she's a woman that there is this this desire and a lot of people feel like that they feel like a woman's innate desire is to be 
married because you have been programmed since you were little, 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 little girls to want to be someone's wife, right? Um, And so when couples are together like that, people assume that it's him that's holding it up and that she would get married if he was ready to get married. They all, And it's always like, oh, you know, you want to get married. Oh, you know, she's just saying that because he's not ready yet. And it's always up to what he wants in order for her to determine how she wants to move. And it's so sad that we put those kind of those kind of burdens on women as women. Like we look at another woman and be like, girl, you know, you want to marry him. Like we was doing that to Tanya and Paul. Um, they've been engaged for 13 years and she refers to him as her husband. And Lenny, um, I'm sorry, Anthony refers to Nicole as his wife. She refers to him as her partner because they're not married, but she doesn't have a desire to get married. And that is what it is. She's a board certified anesthesiologist, which I love. She has her own money. She's not with him for that, right? So what do you guys think of Nicole's setup? Do you, are there some of you who think that she would get married? Well, she said it to the producer. She said to the producer, the producer was like, if you popped a question, would you marry him? She was like, yeah, but I probably wouldn't start planning a wedding right away. I would probably just have on a big ring for a long time. I love it. And I love that she didn't say forever. I love that she said, I'll just have a big ring on for a long time. Because if everything breaks up, we could just break up. There's no like only things that we acquire together that we would split up, right? I have my own shit. You have your own shit. We acquire things together when it's time to, you know, if we don't want to be together anymore, there's nothing to do, like literally nothing to do. And then this idea like, oh, you need to marry, be married so you can make medical, medical decisions. No, you can have paperwork, advanced directives and things set up. It doesn't have to be a marriage that can make you make it feel like you have to make um, business decisions and medical decisions. I can make someone who I'm not married to in charge of my, of, in charge of my medical decisions if I'm not able to make those. So that excuse is out the window. That's no longer necessary you have domestic partnerships, things are changing. So that isn't a reason. So what else? What else? Y'all let me know what else. Okay. Cause what she has, they live in this fucking nice ass house. They've been together six years. She said, that's the only thing that I don't like is that he, um, wants to keep selling houses, selling the houses that they're in and keep moving and moving, but he's, they're selling their house for like 40 million. Right. Um, Adriana and Julia get together. Julia is this Russian chick. Uh, honey, she said, we're like Thelma and Louise. The producer was like, they died at the end. She said they died happy. I said, I know that's right, Adriana. That's my girl. I'm gonna go back and forth between saying Adriana's name right and, and saying it, um, Adriana, then Adriana. That's so funny because I work with a girl named Adriana and I go back and forth with her name. Sometimes I call her Adriana. Sometimes I call her Adriana. So it, it'll go back and forth. Just letting y'all know. Um, I love Julia. I love Julia. I love that she's a farmer. I love that she has a farm. I love Julia. I do. I love everything about her. I love how she's like, she was like saying that she was, um, um, oh, well, anyways, look, let, let me, let me, let's go back. So they're arriving to the party, to the pool party, the hot girl summer, right? And, um, you saw when Adriana walked in, she said, I haven't, I haven't been here for many, many years, but nothing has changed. I said, you bitch. <laughs> well, I tell you, Adriana is giving Larsa the blues and she said she could see her ass from the moon. <laughs> you see, she's fucking with her, right? Okay. Anyway, so honey, Kiki pushes through. I was here for Kiki. I said, come on, bitch. Kiki pushed through. Uh, Marisol showed up. She said she's not jumping in the pool, honey. She has her hair extensions. They talked about, um, Adriana's, um, double triple D's and uh, said that Lenny did her boob job. Larsa, Larsa shows, uh, maybe Larsa can show me the ropes with only fans girl. And then she was like, um, IG is PG 13 and only fans is X rated. 
And then everybody was like, no, 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 no. Don't get it wrong. I uh, OnlyFans is more than just that. And she's like, no, but that's what we talking about. <laughs> I said, I know that's right. We staying on topic. We know it's other shit going on in there. But we know when you mention OnlyFans, ain't nobody thinking about chefs and musicians. Okay? We thinking about tits, ass, dick, and ass. Okay? <laughs> Empathy. That's what we're thinking about. And that's what we're talking about now. Who was it that kept saying that's what we're talking about? We're talking about the X-rated part. We're not talking about the other part. And so Nicole was trying to explain. She said, I signed up for it and I saw like the platform is really, it's really extensive and it's really like more than what you think it is. And Alexia was like, girl, I don't care what you say. This is what I feel about. It. I just think it's a lot. I think it's a lot. And then she was like, I just want to know how you make your money. Right. So then Marisol says that Nicole is sneaky because she says Nicole be talking about behind people's backs and then they face their BFS. And she's like, and that's not a good, that's not a good look. I said, I know that's right. Um, Lisa is saying the world is too judgmental. If Larsa wants to make $10,000 a month showing her feet and a little, a little, a little butt crack, honey, let her do it. Let her fucking do it. I'm the same. I feel the same way. Let her do it. She's not having, she's not fucking. She might be showing a little nipple here. Just like Alexia said, you know, when you get in dress, you might say, Oh, a little nipple right here. But no, like I, I'm, I feel the same way. Go do your only fans, girl. If all you got to do is show some feet and you can pay $10,000 a month. I'm not, I'm not mad at her. And then the, um, the producer asked Lisa, what would you do with 10,000? She was like, the old Lisa would have went to Hermes and blew it all. But the new Lisa, she would invest it. I said, okay, come on girl. And then, um, Kiki was like, girl, who cares? Sell your coochie, sell your picture, sell everything, sell whatever you want. And so Alexia was like, girl, well, we're like from old school. I guess we just have like, you know, we just come from the old school or whatever. Girl, it's a new day. Stop playing. So the farmer, Julia, we find out that she is married to Martina Navratilova, who is a, a extraordinary tennis player. And she's also an artist when we come to find out. And Adriana is going to do a show for her. She's going to host the show. We know Adriana is an art dealer, art buyer, and um, she's going to curate a show for her, which I think is great. Um, that's where the comment from the goat comes up, the goat milk. Um, you don't have to live on a farm to know that you don't extract milk from an animal with your mouth. <laughs> Marisol goes, you got to be smarter than that. I would have said the same thing. I would be like, girl, you got to be smarter than that. Don't say no shit like that. You can't say no stuff like that. I like that they straighten it up on the other episode. She basically said, just because I don't like what you said doesn't mean I don't like you. And then Kiki shares with her that she's going through something. So, you know, she feels good that she actually came to her and said something to her. And she was like, doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with being smart, Marisol. <laughs> I love Marisol. I told y'all I love Marisol. I love Marisol. I love Nicole. I love, well, from the old, from the old cast, I like Adriana. I like Marisol and I like Alexia. I go back and forth with Alexia, um, but I definitely love Gertie and I definitely love Julia and I definitely love Nicole. Larsa, I can do, I can do without and Lisa, I could do without really, honestly, but you know, it is what it is. So we're going to see. Okay. So, so what happened? Um, uh, so Larsa, she gets everybody in sweatshirts and stuff and they're taking digs at her. They were like, it's affordable. This seems like slutty teen, you know, slutty teen attire. And then somebody said that Larsa is 47 going on 13. <laughs> and did you see how Kiki was, she was posing for her pictures. I was like, come on model. You better be a model. I loved it. Um, Julia, so they're going to their finished house. It's almost ready with Martina Navratilova. I feel like you have to say Martina Navratilova together. You just can't say Martina, but I'm going to say Martina, but I love to say Martina Navratilova. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so they're together. They're in this relationship. She says she's never been with a woman before her. She's had um, relationships. She's had children, but she's never married. And when she met Martina Navratilova, <laughs> when she met her, it was just like, their souls met and she said but she was still dealing with you know um you know back in the day being gay in the industry she said it wasn't really acceptable so when 
she would like reach for her and reach for her hand. She would be like, you know, kind of embarrassed. She was on the down low, basically. And so, uh, so she said, oh, she said she came to the United States. She entered into uh, Miss U.S. She was, she won Miss USSR. And then she entered, I forgot what pageant, but Dick Clark, shout out to Dick Clark. He was the host um, and she didn't speak any English. And she said when she came back, on on tv she was going to be able to speak english she said i think i'm doing pretty good i was like yes julia i like julia i love julia and um i love when they were going around the house and there was a room right and um julia goes we're gonna put all of martina's trophies in there martina said it's too small i said i know that's so right <laughs> That's what Serena said. Remember Serena had a trophy room and she was like, it's too small. This, this room cannot fit all my trophies. I said, I know that's right, bitch. Y'all better be superstar athletes. Okay. Um, hey, Siri. How old is Martina Navratilova? Martina Navratilova is 65 years old. Okay, she's 65 years old. All right. So, Nicole... Her son, Grayson, is so cute. Oh, my God. That little boy is adorable. I was looking at his little face and his little brown hair, his little brown eyes. He was so cute. And he was talking like, like he was a big boy. I was like, he's so cute. And he was like, he was going to play with his volcanoes. And when the dad came home, they did their volcanoes together. It was so cute. And then I love that Nicole asked him, can I have a hug? Y'all need to start asking children if you can hug them. And if they don't want to hug you, don't feel any kind of way. Let Learn these children autonomy, right? Don't make them seem like they have to give their bodies over to someone just because someone wants to hug them or kiss them or whatever. Ask children, can I hug you? You have no rights over these children. Teach them autonomy, boys and girls. And I love the fact that she asked him, can I hug you? And he was like, yes. And she was like, come here. It's so cute. It was so cute. He was so cute. So so, um, yeah, he goes, let's do it when they were getting ready to do the volcanoes. Anyways, she feels like marriage fucks shit up. They've been together six years. Um, he's an attorney. He's also a pilot. He races cars. And, you know, somebody on, I think Lily on Twitter said that he, it's like he almost has Peter Pan syndrome might be something going on with him. But for me, from what, from what I saw, I just saw a man who is enjoying the fruits of his labor. Like if I have the means to do it. I'm going to fucking do it. If I can do it, I'm going to do it. And I have the money to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to learn how to fly planes. If I have the money to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to learn how to race cars. Nicole said that he inspires her. He is a modern Renaissance man. Um, he wants to sell the house. She said, this is a six house. They done sold, um, for 40 million. I, I would be annoyed with having to move so much, but it's like, after a while, you're going to have to be like, okay, let's, we need a home, right? I guess probably when the kid gets older and starts in school and stuff like that, that's when they're probably going to really be like, okay, we need to not keep moving over and over again. But he was like, we could sell this house for 40 mil and that's over what we were asking. I was like, girl, back up the moving truck, okay? Marisol, Alexia, and Johnny. Johnny is Alexia's assistant. Um, there when they went over her house, they went over Marisol's house, they're drinking or whatever. She says she never thought she would be with a gringo, honey. Her mother told her, if you want to stay married for a long time, marry you a white man, don't marry you a Cuban. Okay. That's what her mother told her. Um, she says she thinks she would still be with Herman or she don't know what her life would be like if Herman didn't die because he did not want a divorce. They found out that the gay lover was there at the funeral and she wants to know she hasn't seen him. She wants to know, like, was it a, a love thing? Was it just sex? She wants to know. I would want to know, too. And and then, like, Johnny was like, well, if you... um." Are you ready to hear the answers to the questions that you have? You may not want to hear. She's like, no, I'm ready. She was like, 
they were like, well, what if he says like, we loved each other. We were really in love. Are you okay with that? She's like, yeah, I'm fine with that. I can't wait. But next week she's crying. She's crying about something. She was like, my husband's gay. Girl, a lot of these husbands is gay. I haven't seen him. You ready? She says she needs closure. She wants, are you prepared to hear what you don't want to hear? Are you ready? Um, and then when they brought him up on IG, they hollered out, his penis is huge. <laughs> <laughs> so he they sent him a text message and he said when he gets back he will love to sit down with alexia and meet with her right all right so uh, larsa this is episode two larsa is talking with her assistant uh, her her assistant looks so fucking familiar i don't know where i know that girl from but she looks so familiar she they're talking about only fans and they were taking a picture and that she asked the girl to get in the picture with her the girl was like no if you post it to ig i'll get in the picture but if it's for only fans i'm not getting in the picture <laughs> i'm not playing those games with you larsa pippin <laughs> larsa pippin honey um they pay for every interaction she says um this one guy likes her feet her feet and she sends him pictures and she's like he's a correction officer and he had a hard day at work so i sent him a picture of my feet but he paid for it though i said come on bitch i have no problem let me tell you something i have no problems with that take all their money girl take it all um lisa and her husband they go out to dinner and they see larsa with a date honey larsa is dating she is mingled she's single and mingling she feels great with who she is she feels the best she's ever felt she's 47 years old dating these young boys we've seen larsa in the news honey the people cannot stand it but i i'm for it i don't care like larsa do what the fuck you want to do if you 47 going on 17 girl 13 is too young but if you 47 going on 17 living your life or whatever just leave the younger guy younger younger guys alone stay like maybe 10 years 15 i don't know oh she's 47 she's having a good time or whatever so anyway so lisa and her husband um were talking about um the affair she's talking about the emotional affair and she says she's never she would never really know if it was beyond emotional but she forgives him but she has not forgotten about it gertie and russell russell is her husband he is a firefighter he's a nice looking guy um, high school sweetheart. They have their two sons, Miles and Liam. Um, they, you could tell, I said, when she said they worship their dad, they love their dad. You can tell when that little boy hit the corner and he saw his dad and he went up to his dad and was hugging and was like smiling, like that little bashful smile. Oh, you could tell. And she said her husband is a man of few words. He doesn't do a lot of talking, whatever. She said, just like her oldest son is just like his dad. They don't do too much talking or whatever. And she was like, you know, had her hands in her son's hair. It was so cute. It was so cute. I love it. She said they are obsessed with their dad. She said they are obsessed. But you could tell that little boy. I said, when he looked and when he hit the corner, I was like, oh my God, I love to see little boys like in love with their fathers. I love to see it, especially little boys, little girls. It's fine. But I love to see little boys. It just like bashful and just love their dads. I love to see that. So that was really cute to witness. Adriana and Julia um, are going to do the art show, the, um, the art show for, um, Martina, she says, I know good art. She's going to host a solo show for her. They're like two weeks away. Baby Julia and Adriana flirting. She was like, that's when I first met you, I called you Snow White, but they were speaking to each other in French. I was like, bitch, <laughs> let me tell you something. If Julia was not married, I would be all for it. Right. Adriana, she don't care. You already know she don't give a damn, but she's been, they flirt. When I tell you they flirting heavy, like heavy, she was like spin around for me. She was like, girl, it's too early to do all this. Then I was, I was here for it, but I was like, girl, you are married. You cannot do this. You cannot do this unless Martina says it's okay. <laughs> but I was here for it anyway. So Alexi and Todd, they go out to eat. Um, again, he's Italian. He's into commercial real estate. He is not an escort. Let's be clear. She said either in Miami, you into commercial real estate or you an escort or both, but he's not an escort. He's six years younger than her. Um, she's saying planning a wedding is stressing her out. She wants to have a big, huge wedding. Her first two, um, marriages, I guess, didn't have a big wedding or whatever. Um, 
yeah, she said that her mother told her white men stay married longer. Um, and so she finally has her prints or whatever. And they were asking the other women, you know, I guess about, about Alexia's relationship. And then Lisa was like, she's like a free bird. Um, and then Marisol was like, I've never, she keeps saying how she's so in love with him. And I have never seen her like this, but Peter, Alexia's son and Todd are at odds. Okay. So we find out later what it's all about, but we'll get to it. Dr. Nicole and Anthony, um, he tells her he's getting ready to buy a Bugatti. Um, they met in Las Vegas. She th first, when she first met him, she thought he was just a flashy attorney, but he does have layers. He's soft and caring. Um, and so she's inviting all the women to sushi night. Um, she was like, you know, just be prepared. People might be ask us if we're going to get married. And she was like, he was like, well, just tell him to talk to your attorney. But then when he, when he mentioned it, he act like he was pressed up against the wall when they asked him, I was like, you wasn't supposed to do that. You were supposed to say we're fine where we are. But he was like, we'll eventually do that. When they started asking him questions about that later. Um, she said Oprah and Stedman are doing just fine. So that if Oprah and Stedman can do it, Anthony and Dr. Nicole can do it too. You know what I'm saying? I'm here for it. So anyways, Gertie is meeting Alexia at this Spanish monastery to, you know, help her plan the wedding. Uh, years earlier, Gertie got married there. It seemed a little too small for me. I was just like, okay. And then when she said the area where they would dance, um, no, um, Marisol and Alexia were like, uh, uh, honey, we're not dancing here with the saints watching over us. Um, oh, and then, so she didn't fill out the first time bride questionnaire. She was like, I'm not a first time bride, but she was like, Gertie was like, I need you to fill out the questionnaire so I can be in your head. I can know what you want. Baby, she was going over all the questions. It said 20 minutes later. I was like, girl, she's serious about her shit. And she didn't get to where she was, where she is without being serious about her shit. And I love, I love to see it. I love to see it. Are your sons going to walk you down the aisle? She was like, well, I haven't really asked yet. So she doesn't really know because her Peter again and Todd are at odds. Um, the power to say no. That's what she said. I want to ask my son to walk me down the aisle, but he's old enough to say no now. And he doesn't seem like he's into it at all. Um, she said she went to Catholic school, so she doesn't want to be disrespectful to the saints. And so it's a no to the Spanish monastery. It's nice. That would be nice for a small, for a small wedding for, but for some reason, based on Alexia backing her Range Rover into a car elevator and going up 52 floors, I don't think she wants anything small. <laughs> so at Nicole, um, so, um, um, Peter and Alexia meet at Versailles. Shout out to Versailles. They have really, 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 really good Cuban food. Um, I see, of course they have one in Miami, but they definitely have several in Southern California. So Versailles is actually really, really good Cuban food. Um, so Peter is cute. I wrote cute right here, but he just seems like he's an entitled spoiled fucking brat. That's what it seems like to me. I would love to know why he's getting, why he got a divorce from his wife. He moved from Paris. He's in the process of a divorce. Um, she said the situation with Peter and Todd, it was a moment of de desperation, but we need for y'all to be civil with each other. I want you to walk me down the aisle. When August 8th, that's near his birthday. He's, was he a Leo? I was like, girl, um, August 8th, he was like, I might be in Tokyo for my birthday. She was like, what? And he was like, yep. He was like, I really don't feel like I need to be involved. Like I, just because you have this thing going on with your life and with your stepdaughters, I was like, okay, <laughs> with your stepdaughters, he got a little attitude with that one. I was like, okay, Peter. So we see what the problem is, right? And so he says, I don't feel like I need to be involved in the shit you got going on or whatever. So, um, I don't have to agree, agree with it. So it's to be continued. So we'll see how that works out. And Nicole sushi party. I didn't like the geisha. I'm sorry. I did not like the geisha girl with the, um, with the bar around her champagne geisha girl. I did not like it. I didn't, she looked scary. Like, 
I didn't like it at all. I was like, Ooh, this is, too, this is a lot. This is a lot. Um, the champagne station. Yeah. The geisha. I'm not with it. Kiki shows up. She pushes through. Julia shows up. Everyone looks fucking incredible. Gertie shows up. She had like a little ponytail with some gold ribbon or something in it. She looked really, really cute. Um, Alexia was stuck in the bathroom. Marisol and Kiki have their conversation. But the, basically, Larsa was like, you know, the way that you talk to people, you just come out with these one liners and you just walk away. You drop them and walk away. I told y'all Marisol reminds me of Tracy Ellis Ross. It's something about her. I know that Marisol is married, but she just reminds me of like, I don't know. She just reminds me of like an older single woman. I know she's married. She's happily married. And she got, you know, she says that her mother and father sent, um, her husband to her that's what Tr Teresa says about her mother and father that they sent Louie to her um so she could be happy um whatever you need to tell yourself is beautiful um everyone looks great doesn't mean I don't like you that's what Marisol told tells Kiki just because I don't like what you said does not mean I don't like you <clears throat> she's like she's just going through a hard time right now and we're going to start fresh and they give each other hugs and I thought that was really nice um, Nicole and Lisa are having a conversation in the dining room and the setup was nice. Everything, everything else about Nicole's party was really, really nice, except that geisha. It just threw me off. And I was just like, mm, I, you know, it's, it's fun to have something quirky at a party like that, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, um, Julia looked nice. She came with her kimono on or whatever, like a kimono inspired, inspired robe. And Nicole and Lisa were having a conversation and they asked about, you know, is it harder with two children? And she said, yes, it is. Um, and so they asked um, Anthony about planning your wedding. He tells Alexia, I'll plan your wedding. She was like, what about you? You going to have planning your wedding? And then he was like, you know, it's already official. It's official where we have a relationship. We're together. We have a children. We have children. It's already official. <clears throat> Alexia says, deep inside, women want to get married. Y'all gonna have to go away from that. Everybody don't want to be in situations like that. Like that, everybody don't want that. Just because you want that, don't mean that everybody else wants that. And I think it's so dangerous. And I think it's unfair to assume that all women deep down inside want to get married. Get out of here with that. Um, Alexia and... Um, Oh, Alexia and Marisol and all of them are sitting around and Alexia shares with us what happened between Peter and Todd. So apparently Peter was smoking weed. He gave some to Frankie. She was like, we thought, you know, we have heard that smoking weed or cannabis is good for people with brain injuries. And then somebody said, yeah, and anxiety and stuff like that. So Frankie had some weed, <clears throat> had too much, his blood pressure dropped and he kind of passed out. And so it was like really hectic for like five minutes. Um, she said that, <laughs> Alexia said that um, Peter had to bring, uh, had to bring Frankie back. And then when Todd came out, he said some mean things to Peter about, I guess, you know, everybody was scared. I mean, somebody passing out like that. He already has a brain injury. She said he fell like boom and hit his head. Girl, he's not going to die from, um, from Rifa, okay? Blood pressure dropped and that was it, but it got really hectic. And when Peter came out, he said some inappropriate mean things to, when Todd came out, he said some inappropriate mean things to Peter. And that's why Peter don't fuck with him no more. Um, Peter said some mean shit to him. So it ended like that. It said to be continued. And overall, both episodes were really good. I love the fashions. I love the colors. It's so vivid. It's so pretty. It's so just Miami. So shout out to Real Housewives of Miami. First two episodes out the box. Everybody has really cool storylines. I'm, I'm here for all of it. So y'all let me know what y'all think about the episodes and let's get down in the comments. Peace.